Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to tell you everything that I wish I would have known when I got started programming. How you approach learning to code is extremely important. You want to have the right mindset going into it, otherwise you're going to have a bad time. So I'm going to show you, or try to explain to you the, the right, or one of the right effective ways to learn to code. And one of the most important things you can have is curiosity. You want to have a genuine desire to know how things work. And that changes your perspective when you're learning to code um, because there's always going to be error messages, there's always going to be new things coming up, and your unfamiliar terms are going to pop up everywhere. So you want to be curious to know how they work. And uh, when I when I started to learn to code, I just wanted to build a business, and that's all I cared about really. So anything that popped up, like anything, any new term that showed up, was a frustration to me because it got in the way of me building my product rather than actually having a desire to learn how it worked, so I could actually build my product. Because you have to know how those things all work in order to you know build stuff so be curious um, so that means enjoy learning uh, you're also going to want to have patience uh, because you know there's always new things popping up and there's always new technologies that are coming out that are being improved and so and there's also lots of bugs all over the place so everything you do there's going to be something that gets in the way and it's just basically overcoming obstacle after obstacle after obstacle when you're building stuff and the error messages can you know pop up at inconvenient times and so you have to have the patience to be able to um, get through those and stop what you're doing and overcome that error or new term or obstacle or whatever so patience is extremely important uh, embrace the error messages because like i said they're going to come up at uh, inconvenient times and also it's you know, it can be difficult to read them or understand what it means. And a lot of times people will Google error messages and then they will copy and paste the solution into their, um, you know, into their situation and it won't work because their situation is different than the one, than the solution that they found on the internet. So it may not work the right way. So I highly encourage you to read the error message carefully and embrace it. So I didn't really learn to embrace the error messages until I had wasted three days trying to troubleshoot an error the wrong way. My approach at the time was copy and paste the error into Google and then find an answer on Stack Overflow most likely, copy and paste the error into, or copy and paste the solution into my situation and hope it works. And this time it did not work. None of them worked uh, at all. So I really struggled and eventually I caved in. I actually caved in twice. The first time I decided I need to read all of this information in the Apache manual and learn how to use it. But when I got here, I saw this giant wall of text with a whole bunch of terms that I didn't understand. And each page had five or six links of more things that I didn't understand. And those pages had links with stuff that I didn't understand. And those pages had, you know, and it just kept going. It just got deeper and deeper and deeper into the rabbit hole. And so I was like, okay, I'll just forget that and I'll just continue to try to use Stack Overflow. And then after three days, I finally decided that this is not working. I have to understand how Apache works. And so the cool thing was within an hour or so, I had actually resolved my issue. And the even better part was that I knew how Apache worked on a much deeper level. So even if it does take you a longer amount of time up front, it's worth it because it makes you a more knowledgeable developer and you are capable of working a lot faster now and you're a lot more flexible with this piece of technology. So what I'm basically saying is take the time up front to learn how a piece of technology works. So yes, if you get stuck on an error, that means you may have to spend a couple hours, maybe even an entire day or two, researching this entirely separate thing just to learn how it works. 
And that's the kind of thing that programmers have to be willing to do is take a break from what they're doing and learn something new because it will help them with their project. So go slow to go fast. You know, stop what you're doing, research and understand the pieces of technology that you're using. And that will really help you as a developer. So definitely embrace the error messages. The manual is your friend. Like I said, read it and take the time to research. The slow investment up front will pay off 10 times or more uh, in the future, in the long run. So the language you choose only matters a little bit. You, As long as you get something, choose something that is within the category of the type of project you're trying to build, then you'll be fine. So if you're trying to build a mobile application, then you'll want to pick uh, probably Swift for iPhone or Android for Java, or for web development, you'll want to pick you know anything that is typically used for web development projects like PHP, JavaScript, Python, um, etc. So Ruby would also be a good one. So any of those are fine. It just depends on you know make sure it fits within that category. And so uh, popular languages are typically better for beginners because there's more jobs, more developers, tutorials and resources, etc. So it's easier to get help when you need it and it's easier to learn with all the extra resources. So definitely pick something that's popular as your first language. And you're gonna be mul learning multiple languages throughout your career anyway, so don't stress about it too much. Another thing when learning to code is breaking things down. It's really a lot easier to learn something when there's not a whole bunch of pieces interacting with it. So if you can isolate things into one separate thing and only learn that one thing at a time, then it'll make learning it a lot easier and integrating it with other things a lot easier. So for example, a, a database, you know, it interacts with the, you know, it can interact with the front end language, the back end language, uh, the framework and all, you know, all sorts of different things. So you want to learn the database just all by itself. So whether you spend a couple hours or a couple days, you just want to get comfortable with that piece all by itself before integrating it with other things. Because in programming, there's just so many moving pieces that it can easily get overwhelming. So one thing at a time really helps. One of the biggest mistakes that I made learning to code was learning a bunch of different things at the same time. So I recommend building a strong foundation in one stack. So an example would be, you know, MySQL, PHP, and JavaScript um, with, you know, some frame, some PHP framework. Or that's just an example, or Ruby on Rails with JavaScript, one stack. Because learning to code applies to all languages. If you can build an app in Python, you can build it in Ruby. If you can do it in Ruby, you can build it in JavaScript, you know. They're all very similar and there's quite a bit of differences as well, especially if you change to a different type of programming. So going from web programming to like systems programming is a lot different. But the idea of coding, you know, solving problems with code is is very similar regardless of the language. So I recommend working, getting at least getting started by focusing on one stack because yes, you can code in all the other languages, but you can still work 10 times faster in the one that you're the most comfortable in. And so being able to get done with a project 10 times faster means you'll be able to make more money, you'll be able to get a job easier or quicker, um, and it's just all around helpful. So once you know how to code, um, well in one language, then start dabbling in other languages because I think it is important to be diverse, but you still want to have a language that you're really comfortable in that you can get work done really fast. So for example, uh, I had been coding for, you know, maybe two years at the time. I don't know when I was, I had a freelancing project with the Google Maps API and it took me probably eight hours to f get the the solution figured out, right? And if uh, by the time I had figured it out, if I was to throw my computer in the lake and start over from scratch, it would probably only take me 15 or 20 minutes to build that same app again, because I already understand how 
Google Maps API works and JavaScript um, with that kind of situation. So you'll be able to work a lot faster if you're comfortable in that language. Programming challenges are really great because they help you develop analytical thinking and problem solving skills that can help you, you know, basically just build your projects. So things like reversing a string, FizzBuzz, Towers of Hanoi, uh, there's tons of programming challenges and they will really help you develop the thinking skills needed to be a successful programmer. So programming challenges are absolutely huge. Building projects and building your portfolio in particular is also extremely, extremely important. It's probably the number one thing other than curiosity that will help you become a great programmer. So I recommend keeping all the projects that you build. That way you can keep track of your progress and you can look back and see the progress that you've made. Uh, don't just delete stuff, but you know, keep it there and look back on it to, you know, to reflect and stuff. But so projects and exercises are absolutely huge. And I recommend starting simple. A lot of people will say, oh yeah, work on the project that you, you, know, you wanna build. And I think that's a great idea, but try to break it down into extremely simple, you know, build only a tiny piece of that application. So an example would be your first project could be print your favorite food to the screen. You know, so that would just be, you know, HTML markup, you know, like a like a paragraph with, you know, spaghetti. And then so that's that's its own project. And then you can add complexity to that project. So ask the user what their favorite food is and then print that to the screen. You know, and then you could add a little bit more complexity and have that name, have that person's name and food saved to a database. And this would be a good time where you would learn, you would take a step back and learn about databases all by themselves. So then once you do that, then start and then integrate the database to this mini app here and save the user's name and food to that database. And then you could add, and then the next step would be to print everyone's uh, food from that database, you know, and that so now you've got even a more complex app. And then, you know, you add another feature, you know, if the computers, if the current user's food is the same as another, then set up a date for those two people the the people that have the matching foods, you know, so start very, very simple, and slowly add complexity to your app. And then eventually, you will have the app that you want. But starting simple, is extremely important and then just slowly build up complexity. When you're learning to code, you do have to have a development environment set up on your computer in some way. And there's several different ways to do this and it can be kind of difficult. So I'm gonna show you four different ways very briefly and how you can set it up. So first you can try on your local machine, which is just installing it on your computer. You can also use a virtual machine with something like VirtualBox and create a separate operating system or computer within your computer. And uh, this would be good because anything on your real computer stays safe in case you were to mess up or anything, but it's a little bit slower. So virtual machine is an option to consider. There's also dual booting where you cut your computer essentially into two or more chunks and you put a different computer or different operating system on each chunk. And that way you get the full speed of your normal computer, but you have a separate computer specifically for programming or something like that. And so dual booting is where you cut your computer into more chunks and have multiple computers inside your laptop. And that's another option. And then Docker is another really good tool. It basically allows you to put your an entire development environment within these things called containers. Just think of them as boxes that are separated out from the rest of your computer. And these are really cool because other people can set up development environments for you and then you can use them. The only downside with Docker is it's, a, it's an advanced tool. So if you wanna actually customize anything, it may be difficult. And there are courses that I would recommend taking on Docker, but um, Essentially, these are four different ways that you can create your own development environment. And I'll have separate videos on each of these. So just a couple more random thoughts is you wanna focus on clean code. Code is not going to make itself clean. So if you wanna improve, focus on improvement. 
pair, pro pair programming and just working with people in general is a lot more fun and you can get better quicker because you have other people, preferably more experienced than you, or even if you're gonna teach someone, it's just really good. Uh, going to school should be an option that you should consider. There's a lot of interesting degree paths and stuff that you can learn, and it's really hard to teach that kind of stuff uh, to yourself or learn it on your own. So going to school could be a really fun or beneficial thing for you. So conclusion, be curious. Research everything, errors, unfamiliar terms, anything that comes up, research it and embrace errors, programming challenges, and building your portfolio with interesting projects. Focus on your projects and building stuff. And that's pretty much it. Have fun. And be sure to subscribe to the channel and visit the website truthseekers.io. We've got a lot of interesting stuff over there. We're trying to build a community of programmers and just trying to serve people trying to get better at programming and stuff. So have a good day and I'll talk to you soon.